I feel like death is probably one of the greatest fuels to my work because of the way that it seems to set off so many other cycles of events. I like to focus in on the beauty and how death actually brings more life. So sometimes I'll paint a creature and they'll be all smoky, and that's because we're seeing their entire life cycle from beginning to end. They're constantly in the process of living, but also of dying. I'm Aria Fawn, and I create kind of dreamy, dark surrealism artwork. I use a lot of kind of animal iconography to tell stories about the human experience without needing to portray race or gender roles. It's kind of like if dreams, or at least if my dreams, were put into a visual on this earth. So many of my best creative moments have come directly from working until the sun came up, so working with the full cycle of the moon. And I do a lot of ritual and work directly in conjunction with the moon phases. Many of my ideas come from nostalgia as a child. They come from the animals I've been around throughout my life or the music I've listened to or the nature I've seen. And then they largely come from experiences I've been through, um, particularly the more negative ones because I feel like those are what I still need to process and being able to process them through my art tends to fuel more and more ideas, strangely enough. I feel like the pieces themselves are like smoke. They're very layered, they're full of little echoes and symbolism. I don't like things to be black and white. I always love exploring the little details and I think my art is the same way. I love communicating in hundreds of subtle layers that all come together to form one picture that still isn't totally clear. There's a lot of little details, like little skeletons hidden in the landscape. My animals are often kind of ghostly and smoky. There's a lot of repetitive spirals and moons. So animals, monsters, they're kind of my storytellers and my, the characters in my play. A lot of the creatures in my universe kind of reveal themselves, I feel like. And I feel like for me, oftentimes, inspiration comes when I'm really in need of something else in my life, when I'm going through something. So that's usually when I'll meet with these creatures, whether in my dreams or out hiking. I've had a few dreams that, you know, came true in very strange ways. And one of those was that I kept having dreams and visions of a black fox. And then I went up to my great grandmother's cabin, which is our family cabin that appears in many of my paintings. And while I was there, I met a black fox. Now that might mean nothing, but after meeting him, he continued to appear in my dreams and our relationship, so to speak, got much stronger. And he's continued to be a very strong symbol within my work. I think these black animals, um, who I call the noirs animaux, which means black animals in French, they kind of fuel so many of my ideas. And I feel like they have become these little characters within my work that I use to represent different ideas and different concepts from the black fox, who is kind of a very tough love type of creature that comes along and tells you when you need to get over yourself and get back to work, to um, the black crow that I paint, who usually represents one thing dying and opening a door to something new and potentially better. But then there's the black unicorn within my work, who I paint much more frequently. And she represents a variety of things like naivety, kindness, confidence, but also um, loneliness. Many of my creatures have positive sides and negative sides, so I can kind of choose them to represent these dual personalities within my work because so many people also have those positives and negatives that they struggle with, and I like to make that very much a big part of the characters in my own work. Art has continued to be this beautiful way to process all of my emotions and get through things. My pieces used to be a lot more soft and surreal and not very emotional because I was only touching the surface of what I felt inside. But about six years ago, I painted a very visceral piece called Purge the Smoke that represented going through pain in order to create good change in your life. And from there, I felt like every piece after that needed to be more me. So everything I create now 
feels like it's just getting weirder and weirder because I'm putting more and more of me and all the little things that make me tick into the art, whether I think people will like it or not. I predominantly paint for, I mean, for everybody, but especially for people who have had some struggle in their life or who may need an escape or may feel like they're not at home in their own skin or on this earth. And so my hopes when I put a piece up is that it's going to touch somebody who needs to hear or see what I've made because of something they may be going through. And my goal is always to provide another world where they can be more of themselves. I look forward to doing more art and to getting out in nature and fueling my inspiration. Those are the things that make all the other stresses totally worth it. I wouldn't survive as anything more than a shell of myself if I couldn't make art.